I'll be seeing you. Welcome to ASP Stuff Radio, the internet radio show where we talk about stuff the media does not want you to know. Like how cats sweat through their paws, or how in the UK there's no legal obligation to report a car accident involving a cat, even though it is illegal not to report a car accident involving a dog, or even a farm animal such as a cow. Oh, and how the FBI generates terrorism. Today is Tuesday, June 14th. I'm your host, Aristalbert. Joining me are Socrativan and Palal. Season 2 begins with episode number 25. Welcome, my Greek compadres. How are you doing? Good, good. So that's Palal? <laughs> Palal. Palato? Palato. Right? It's a combo of Paul and Plato. Try to switch okay. it up a little. So, just for you folks out there, I'm on assignment. Yes. I, yeah, I'm in a bunker and I'm talking uh, with through a can with a string. Yes, you are in the desert. In the desert? Not Dodging down. bullets from Omar Mateen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Uh, Close call. Out. Close call. All right, and we got to watch the jokes because it's a sensitive time. Sensitive. For all of our millions of listeners. Yeah, we got to be careful here. Especially those in the gay community. Yeah. Yeah. With the, uh, we have a lot of gay listeners. Yeah. We have a lot of gay listeners in the BLT community. I mean, the LGBT community. Oh, oh man. I was a bad I like start Donald here. Trump. Oh, Sorry. Okay, bad start. Sorry. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the... All right. Okay, so... So, uh, so, so we're starting out with some jokes after this somber weekend. It, it's been a somber week. <laughs> weekend, yeah. Week, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't sure if we should get right into it or if we should... Uh, I don't know. Well, let's, let's get into it. Get into it. Okay, so who yeah. would like to... Uh, so what happened? Talk about recent events on was it Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday? It there were started, two. Started started Friday night. Friday night. S- started Friday night. Okay. So what what happened Friday night? There was a concert in Orlando, mm-hmm. and one of the performers was a former contestant on The Voice TV show. Steven's favorite show. Yeah. Yep. With yeah. Uh, what's his name? Adam Levine and. Blake Sheldon, Shelton, Sheldon. Uh, I don't know. <coughs> Gwen, Gwen, Obviously, our Gwen, sh- Gwen Stefani, I think. Okay, right? I've never yeah. seen this show before. C- Christina Aguilera. Yeah, there, there I, so it, it's like I a. Admit, I have seen a couple seasons when it first started. It was oh. actually pretty good. Okay, now it's very it, old and tired. Is it similar to American Idol? More yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, except. Okay. They have auditions where you're not the the judges aren't actually watching the contestants; they're just listening to them sing. Okay. So how they appear oh. plays no part in whether or not they get on the show. Okay, I think I have seen an episode. I just didn't know it was they have called the Turning the Voice. Chair. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I've seen a couple episodes. So I guess she was a contestant, probably in a season that I didn't watch. So yeah, but. She was performing at this concert. Apparently, she's still having a career in music. And afterward, uh, when they were selling merchandise, she was at the merchandise table. And some random guy came in and just shot her. Hmm. And then he killed himself. He shot himself right afterward. And that's that's how it all started. This part, I didn't even know this. So, what you're talking so about. this is news for you. News to me, yeah. Or where, where have you been? Well, I've, I know about the mass shooting on Sunday morning. Hey, I don't blame you because the media, for me, when I turn on the TV and I don't have cable, but mm-hmm. so far when I watched NBC, the Today Show, CBS, um, and PBS, recently I just watched yesterday's news, PBS, on the news hour. They didn't mention anything about Christina, Gr- I think it's Christina. Mm-hmm. G- Christina Gimme, Gimme or Grimmy or Grimmy, Grimmy, Grimmy. So I've seen I, the name okay. and I haven't bothered to click on that well, particular article because I I didn't even realize it was connected to all this. But. Well, I don't blame you for not knowing because the media doesn't cover this story, which I think is, okay. is odd because this also ha- this happened in Orlando, Florida. Well, I'm sure there's some relation which Paul's about to get into. Yeah. 
Well, I don't know all the relation, but the only reason I saw it was it was on the Yahoo News yeah. app. I don't really watch cable news, so just I don't, I don't think right? any of us do. Mm-hmm. And that was that was late Friday night, early Saturday morning yeah, when, that, when that happened. And so <clears throat> then a couple of days later, of course, there's the mass shooting and, and at the... What, what was it? Was it another concert or um, it was a dance a, club? At a dance, a nightclub it's called uh, Pulse. Pulse. L B G T uh, nightclub. It was a gay nightclub, and it happened to be uh, Latin night. Hmm. So it was essentially <clears throat> L G B T Latinos. Yeah, most of the yeah. victims were Latinos mm-hmm. and L G B T. So All you right. can imagine that was quite the party. When I so when I f- heard about these two stories, I'm like, okay, wait, something's not right. The first incident occurred in Orlando at the Plaza Live Theater, and then the second incident occurred at this gay nightclub, also in Orlando. Which I guess they're not too far apart. These two venues, something. Orlando is not a very large city. Not as well, big yeah, as LA Disney or Disney World. Disney World's there, Universal Studios. Well, I mean, we've been there. I mean, and, and I've been there a few years ago, so I, I sort of remember the, the downtown, wherever the, there's kind of where you want to hang out, there's not much to it, I don't think. I mean, it's a medium-sized, large city, I okay. guess, within the U.S. Okay. So what were your initial reactions when you heard about these two shootings did you have this suspicion that something's going on there's a weird connection or no connection well did you Paul, treat, you have did to you, answer that you, because you you knew about the both incidents yeah but i didn't see that there was any connection mm-hmm. oh it's just random right one yeah. guy shoots on friday and the other guy says oh it's sunday before the weekend ends i need to get my shooting in too mm-hmm no. Okay, so they're not the same shooters, or so there's not technically any connection between the two incidents. Well, let's. Here's one thing that I discovered on the internet. So the shooter from the nightclub, his name is Omar Martin. Martin. Uh, I don't think it's Martin. Ma- Ma- is Martin. it Martin? Martin. <clears throat> Martin. Yeah. So he's the uh, pulse shooter, yes. the nightclub shooter, and then the other guy that killed Christina. His name is Kevin Loibel. Now I discovered oh. I discovered that they were both Facebook friends. Kevin okay. Loibel was friends with Omar Mateen. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they're both gun enthusiasts, so they maybe they're both uh, in the gun of club. the NRA Facebook, <clears throat> the Orlando chapter. Yeah. yeah. So, so that might not be entirely too. So you don't surprising. think surprising. All right. I mean, no, it's possible. There's, you might be on to something. I, I just oh. thought that was odd. And, and then all of a sudden, it, their Facebook pages were deleted. Okay, well, the FBI maybe deleted mm-hmm. them. Now, I should point out, so every, whenever you turn on the news, everyone's prefacing this shooting, this mass shooting, as the largest mass shooting in U.S. history. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I was naturally critical, and I... I thought, okay, this surely can't be the the largest mass shooting. There had to be something bigger than this before. And then I guess somebody beat me to it. So what is it? There's a larger mass shooting in U.S. history that happened on December 29th, 1890, when 297 Sioux Indians at Wounded Knee Creek on the Pine Ridge yeah, Indian that's Reservation. Different. How's that different? That's cowboys <laughs> and in Indians. Yeah. It's like it's like a bunch of they all uh, It's a bunch of freedom fighters going <laughs> going to a clan. Like, go, uh, catch those engines. Going to a tribe, and they're just playing uh, g- cowboys and Indians uh, uh, and claiming territories, tori signing treaties. I don't know. What's they, the big de- smoking a cigar? The cavalry shot and killed or wiped out the entire Indian camp. The semantics. You, you're spinning the words now. Uh, the largest the mass don't, shooting in U.S. history. How am I? No, how am I playing with how, the next thing you're, you're going to say? You're citing that. I read about it. Someone posted this on uh, the Facebook as well. 
Oh. Next thing you're going to say is these guys were freedom fighters or no. they were ter- terrorists. Now, I have to be objective here. No, this is, uh, they, they were not officially American citizens, the Indians at the time. That's why it doesn't count. So maybe it doesn't count. But I noticed PBS, the only person, the news anchor, she said, the largest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I think anything before 1900 is yeah. not considered modern. Because mm-hmm. back like, then they could shoot anybody and it was just considered uh, free freedom of shooting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you could just, I, I think part of the Second Amendment was that it was kind of uh, accepted that there's going to be a few murders here and there, right? Okay, well, uh, so clearly the historical context is much different than it is today. So it's not a fair comparison to make. Not necessarily. In any case, <laughs> let's. But, uh, but it's I just want to. I just good. It is good. It's a good uh, historical catch. Yeah, I just, I just think we have to be careful with the words that we use because some people would take offense to that. When, uh, when yeah, a group I mean, of people. What was it when American when, Indians when Obama went to uh, visit? Uh, Hiroshima or in Nagasaki. I don't know which one it was, but uh, maybe about a month ago uh, to pay his condolences or to honor the the folks that died from oh, the, the yeah that was too from weak, the bombing. Yeah. What was China's reaction? China's president or whatever he is, prime minister. He's like, um, oh, you know what? It's a shame that he didn't come visit our uh, over China because. The Japanese came in and massacred our people, and I forgot the name of it, whatever mm. battle it was. But, you know, so so there's going to be the, these politics around it, right? Or the domino effect of... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, my... my uh, our, our, our deaths were, you know, worse than yours. Mm-hmm. Something like, I don't know. There, it, which is no... It's crazy. To, yeah. There's no such thing. This pe- killing people in general is not good. Yes. It's bad. Right. In and of itself, it's inherently wrong. <laughs> it's frowned upon. So, well, and then here's the thing. Then now we're all numb, the numbing effect of all of these mass shootings, because it that didn't come to a surprise to anybody, at least not me, that something like this happened. <clears throat> you, you, you felt... Again. So when you heard the story, you were just uh, another, ma- another mass shooting? Just another... Frustrating, aid. because... Uh, Nothing's going to happen. And, and it, it goes back to, uh, was it Sandy Hook or Newtown? Mm-hmm. If they're able to massacre young little toddlers and these rednecks and these congressmen don't want to do anything, mm-hmm. what's the difference here? No, what, that, what, that, what has that, changed? No, that's my, those are my thoughts exactly. I mean, <laughs> so let's get to the conspiracy theory. Okay. <clears throat> Before we do that, I just want to hear your interpretations. What is the media feeding you? What, you know, so, suppose I'm Joe Schmo and I say, okay, what happened? I just discovered there's this mass shooting in, in Orlando, Florida. Paul or Steven, what, what, what's NPR telling you? Uh, inform me. What's the story before I give you an alternative version? Well, I guess that there was a tragic, unspeakable uh, massacre in, in uh, this LGBT uh, nightclub and that this guy was taken in and it was found out that he's already been questioned by the FBI uh, three previous times. So um, uh, the gist is, I guess, he should have already been um, kind of uh, behind bars. Or now something. You have to know. report the facts. What else happened? What, what, didn't he call nine one one and say something? He was. In- oh yeah, and he he called nine one uh, pro- proclaiming that he was. Uh, um, and I he wasn't proclaiming he was an ISIS member, but he was. Uh, he was doing it in the name of ISIS, or was, yes, he was inspired right. by ISIS. Yes. Okay, that's going to lead most, if not all, Americans to believe that this is a terrorist. Um, yes. Well, act. ISIS did claim responsibility. So they did, right? So which- I. Which any, you know, uh, you know, good running terrorist organization would do is they would claim Mm -hmm. responsibility for any 
act that could be considered an act of terror. And any any well oiled uh, machine terrorist right. organization. And he, and he is Muslim. If I am if that, is that correct? Yes, he's Muslim. He's, okay. he's radical he's Islam. Islamic. Well, that's that's not that, the other guy. The other guy is just a white guy. Yeah, the other guy is a white guy. Now I, I I found out that the motive behind white guys. <laughs> Uh, violent act was that he was anti-Christian. It was, it was, it was a hate crime. So, okay. So was he gay? There, I, okay. So I'll, I'll, it's getting he, confusing. Yeah. Yeah. That, now we're talking about multiple. So we have Omar who's anti-gay. This is a hate crime, but he's doing it in the name of ISIS oh, or, Allah. Okay. And then we have white guy, Loibel. He's uh, <laughs> anti-Christian because Christina Grimi, she is, she's pretty passionate about her religious views. In fact, she has a blog and she talks about what it means to be a true Christian. And her music, I believe, is Christian. And there's yeah, something but that... See, no, well, I don't understand the comparison because... Well, we haven't done that. We haven't made any comparisons yet. I'm just reporting what I've researched. But, okay, go ahead. But go ahead. What were you going to say anyway? I'm just saying you're comparing a one... Now, here's, here's where we compare lives, right? One life to 50 lives and 50 injured. All right. Now, here's where the conspiracy comes into play. The intention was for the white guy the operative was there was supposed to be a massacre he was supposed to shoot more than just one person how do you know that this is information from a website i'm not sure if i should um mention this uh-oh <clears throat> oh, yeah but everything that i'm gonna read is word for word i might have modified just the grammar just to make it clear it was the, the grammar was a bit awkward it wasn't correct so when i read this it might sound a little so, funny. so it's not a reputable source no this it's is, not a reputable this source isn't, this is not the associated york press <laughs> no this is not the not new york the times okay. or you know phoenix news times this is just on okay. the internet okay <laughs> <laughs> out there very, on the net very reliable reputable so internet take uh, this article. with a grain of Sea salt. A giant chunk of giant, <laughs> giant, giant chunk of sea salt. Asteroid size salt. Okay. Does everybody have a little time? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, re not really. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That's That's you guys scary. ready? <laughs> so just to. Uh, <laughs> so there are several acronyms that I need to make clear to our listeners out there. S V R stands for, I don't really see how this is an acronym, but it means it re it refers to foreign intelligence service report. So this is, yeah. Okay. Was so, this <clears throat> article written by Gita or? No, no, no. Uh, S V R foreign intelligence service report. And then G four S I guess was formally called group Four secure Corps which is a British multinational security services company headquartered in central London. Uh, it's one of the world's largest security companies that has operations in around all around the world. Um, it's state it's, it's U S headquarters is stationed in, in Jupiter, Florida, which I thought was a weird city name, Jupiter. How far is that from Orlando? Uh, I don't know. Anyone want to check real quick? Let's look it up. But yeah, that's where Omar Mateen worked for G4S. Yeah. Now, not just Omar Mateen. Okay, so here's the other uh, a bizarre connection. But Kevin Loibel was also employed uh, by G4S. So both shooters or attackers worked for the same company. So not only are they Facebook friends... But they are two employees of a one of the world's largest security companies, privately owned security companies. Let's see. I haven't seen that fact reported out anywhere else. I don't either. You worked for G4S. But yeah, continue. Okay. 
So the following piece that I will read is taken from a website and it contains, so in that piece, the person, the author says where he, where he or she got the, the, the information was circulating in the Kremlin in Moscow. And I, I think the person was foreign. So he or she translated this into English, which probably explains why the English or the grammar is a bit incorrect or awkward. Okay, now the report alleges that Hillary Clinton was part of the cabal or secretive force behind the two terror attacks in Orlando, Florida this past weekend, whose motive, quote, appears most likely to be related to her being able to gain sympathy from American homosexual rights supporters against her opponent, Donald Trump. Wait, say that again. So how does this help Clinton? These two attacks would help give Hillary Clinton an opportunity to gain sympathy from homosexuals. Mm, I don't okay. understand that perspective. but, but the, they, Right. So this is just, again, grain of salt, yeah. big boulder of salt on your shoulders. All right. So according to this report, uh, raising the concerns of the SVR relating to the June 11th killing of American pop singer Christina Grimey and the 12, June 12 massacre of at least 50 gay pride celebrants, both occurring in Orlando, the concerns were intercepted, uh, quote, telephonic radio, end quote, communications between the world's largest private security company named G4S and at least 10 of its operatives or contractors operating in Florida, including the now known killers of these two events, Omar Mateen and Kevin James Loibel. Okay. So what's the synopsis? What's okay. the gist here? <laughs> Okay, so there were concerns that were being raised about these two incidences, maybe beforehand, but they were intercepted. Now, now how far in advance are we talking? It doesn't say. Um, but the assumption is that G4S had some kind of contact or communications between these two. Something was going on. Uh, now, all right, so I'm going to, so G4S is the world's largest private army operating in at least hundred com- com- or countries and under then security of state Hillary Clinton's guidance firm order was granted the exclusive contract to manage all of the illegal aliens coming into the United States. So that's just a side note. So Hil- Hillary Clinton at the time must have been involved with this company, but the SVR maintains, um, that which SVR maintains is nothing but another part of the massive human and drug smuggling operation run for decades by the Bush Clinton CIA International Crime Organization. So, so they use this company for ulterior motives. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, Stephen is back in his headquarters. Yeah, safe and I sound. Was transported out uh, of the bunker via uh, hel- helicopter. Helicopter. Hel- helo transport. Okay. G four S security. G four S escorted you uh-huh. back to the homeland. <laughs> and I had no idea about this whole thing about G four S. So now I don't. I don't. Not happy with my services. <laughs> I thought so. Uh, I thought maybe you might have known about G4S considering that you work for considering that the Greek I possibly uh, deal with these types of contracts. No, there's hundreds of thousands of these t- of contracts. But th- remember this is a privately owned company so that never mind. So maybe you don't know about this. Well, company. privately owned companies, the government that's who they contract with, right? So they contract with privately owned companies? Is that what that means? Yes. Oh, public yeah. companies is different, Public right? or sometimes, uh, not, yeah, not too much private companies. Okay. A lot of public companies. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, all right. I want to continue. Omar Mateen and Kevin Loibel came under SVR scrutiny electronic surveillance last month when under G4S leadership command, they both participated in a surprise and massive U.S. military drill in Tampa, Florida, in which they play-acted the role of terrorists who had captured the mayor of that city. So another connection. Wait, wait, so G4S is doing all these exercises? Apparently, and you can look it up. 
Because the there's article a link. you kind of forwarded me and Paul. Paul oh, Ayo. that was a different one. I forgot to send you the yeah, one. Yeah, no, that... no, I, I, I get it. But in, in that article, uh-huh. um, they talk about this whole smuggling operation, right? right? We could talk about that as uh, well. Yeah. So so there's some weird things going on with this company. Yes. So, yeah, I'm not G4S sure. G4S is a little shady. It's a shady So I'm company. not sure what they're, what on the face, what their face business is, quote unquote. What do they do on, on their face business? What do you mean? Like their security business? Is that what they're, con- what, why the government contracts with them to provide security services? Yeah, yeah. They provide security. So if I want security of my condo, I call them or whatever. Okay. Well, Special well, events. I Special- wouldn't do that. No, <laughs> probably not. They, no, they, not at, like not at were, this time. No. They were supposed to, they did, I think, provide security for the 2012 Olympics in okay. London. Oh, okay. Uh, although they did a very poor job at oh, it. There you go. And they've had a lot of other issues in the past, which is what the article laid out, mm-hmm. where, <clears throat> you know, a lot of their employees, they didn't do sufficient background checks or they didn't do background checks at all on people they've hired and and they employ people from all over the world including you know in very you know dangerous middle eastern countries so you don't really know who's working for them Mm -hmm. and and they provide some border services right wait services one, one at a time so yeah, go, go ahead, Paul. Finish. So we, I don't think they know who they <laughs> themselves who oh, they employ. Okay, yeah, and Stephen. So, so also the article points out that they provide border security services. I guess with the Mexican mm-hmm. border. So, um, but they, I, I, I guess when you, it's you don't really need to do good security background checks when you're trying to like, smuggle in people. That's correct. Right? They were they were so, smuggling in uh, illegal immigrants. They were referred to as other than Mexicans, meaning OTMs. O- OTM. OTMs. Anyone but Mexican. Possibly Syrian. <laughs> yeah. uh, who knows? Or Nicaraguans mm. or Greeks or uh, Arabs. Okay. Illegal, so li- illegal Nicaraguans. So I'm going to continue. So both guys participated in a military drill in Tampa, Florida a month before. Yeah, this is some weird security service doing terrorist or security drills. Who knows? Okay, uh, this report notes that Mateen had a previously existing SVR case file due to his close personal involvement with the 2013 Boston bombing mastermind Tamerlan. Uh, I can't pronounce the name. Do you know it's Sarnyal? Sarayal? 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 Tamerlan. Who, in 2011, the Federal Security Service warned American authorities about his plans to conduct a terror bombing in the United States, but went unheeded. And in one of Mateen's last acts before being killed by Orlando police forces, he called their emergency services, telephoning and praising Tamerlan uh, Sarnoff. So, so wait, they were connected then, uh, Tamerlan and... Uh, Omar. So he was involved somehow. So this is no, because in the media, this is, you're asking me what they're feeding us, right? They're mm-hmm. feeding us that this is a lone yeah. wolf. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned that because lone, every freaking news station, they, they utter the same annoying phrase. This is a lone wolf operative, lone wolf. He was a lone wolf. And look, what is a lone wolf? <laughs> Well, it's a hermit, right? So they stay in, in a room locked by themselves mm-hmm. on the internet, doing a lot of web searches yeah. about um, anti stuff. This is guy who's anti- lonely. American He's stuff. a lonely wolf all by himself, not connected to the world, doesn't have any contacts or resources. But he this, this doesn't make any sense because most of the time if it's... Uh, a Muslim, a guy with even a remotely Muslim name, they say it's an act of terror. Omar, Dean, so, <laughs> How's he a lone wolf and Muslim? Well, <laughs> because he's doing web searches, and when he Googles, um, he's, I, I guess he, he figures out that America is bad. And it's it's to, to live the American life, the American way, the free world way is, is it's... To be non to be to be not gay, well, because we can't, yeah. we don't, we don't well, want to forget that he attacked gays. So this is technically a hate crime, but the media wants to turn this into terrorism. 
Yeah, ISIS. my point is, my point is that he kind of he he was upset with the society all on his own mm-hmm. that through Google searches and, yeah, and but by ex- I don't know. Yeah, this is what America. The, this is what the media wants to portray that he was a lonely wolf and he got angry and he snapped and he shot up a bunch of people in a gay nightclub. But that's not the case, according to what I'm reading. He was involved somehow with the Boston bombing. And he praised the guy that was behind it. And he was also employed by G4S that helps smuggle mm-hmm. people into the country. Okay. Who were, all, who were also defective minded, right? Who also had this virus of the mind. Mm-hmm. This is how Hillary Clinton puts it. It's oh, a virus, yeah. virus of the mind. Virus of the mind. Uh, I think humanity is a virus. Let me continue. Mateen's <laughs> extensive SVR file notes that he was also the G4S, his main central conduit of CIA and U.S. State Department monies to Afghanistan on behalf of his father, Sereke Mateen, who is running to be the president of Afghanistan. And over the past five years, Omar Mateen had made at least seven trips to that war-torn nation. Wait, his be, dad is running? Was could running that be corroborated? Yeah. Is, there, is there somewhere that we could actually uh, fact-check that? I'll, I'll send you links. Uh, now, okay, now I should also note that Omar's father supported, you ready for this? The Taliban. Which, just to remind our listeners is an Islamic fundamentalist political movement in Afghanistan that is responsible for a lot of acts of terrorism. Wait, who made the, who doctored this uh, article up? This is, I'm making this all up. I'm a lone wolf. Are you? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Been very lonely in the, my room. All right. So uh, how does this all tie together? What's the, what's the big juicy conspiracy? Well, Okay, hold the, on. The all right, the government's me... behind it all. Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's, Rock, Rockefeller. I'm going to go through this real quick. Okay. So the SVR file on Kevin James Loebel. So this is about the other white dude that shot and killed the voice singer. Um. So Kevin James Loebel, according to the report, report says that he was a three-year private employee contractor of G4S, working in the cell department headed by a Mateen. And included up to 10 operatives or contractors. So is it a coincidence that these events happen at the same on the same time or relatively within the same time frame? Uh, no, no, they're they're all linked. <laughs> okay. But, you I don't know, think so, so 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 the government here, what you're proclaiming or stating here is that or that they let them on the loose because the FBI interviewed Mateen and 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 what the media is feeding us mm-hmm. is that they did not have enough evidence no. to, uh, no. which exactly. is true. Legally, they couldn't do anything just because he proclaims Allah or something. But his fucking dad it. supports the Taliban. Okay, but but that because you support that's not a crime in the U.S. <laughs> okay, it's not it's not a crime. It's free. It's called freedom of. But speech. he was on a terrorist list. Uh, the terrorist watch Ted Kennedy. List. Ted Kennedy is on a terrorist list. Senator Kennedy. Because he carries a AR-47 in his back pocket. That's why Ted Kennedy is also on a terrorist list. So they make up these excuses that we can't lock up people on a, on a no-fly list because apparently the FBI is too dumb to get it right. But that's not true. I think I, I see your point. Your point is that the government, they, in my, what I draw a conclusion, I say they... Let the leash loose. Uh, they they let these guys loose because they don't. I guess they need, for some reason, a mass killing to take place, for political reasons. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't go as far to say that they're telling them, telling uh, Omar that he needs to do this. But, you know, he came, he okay. kind of plotted on uh, on. A, I don't know on his own or with Ooh. other groups here uh, to do something I, like this, but but he they allowed it. They allowed okay, it. Okay, but let me finish. Let me. There's a bit more. 
So on the evening of June 10th, SVR intelligence analysts monitoring G4S operations in Florida detected the activation of Mateen's cell or department, but were not alarmed because they believed another U.S. military exercise was occurring, like the one that had occurred the previous month in Tampa. G4S operations knew something was going on with Mateen's department Okay. But it was, they thought it was a false alarm, though, right? But the, they thought it was a false alarm. Isn't that a signal? Again, you don't I mean, legally you just assume have, you just he hasn't assume legally you just, done anything wrong. Okay. Now, on the morning of June twelfth, CVR intelligence analysts monitoring American electronics in the Florida region in which Mateen's cell or department was operating in reported that the pop singer Christina Grimi had been shot and killed by G4S private employee contractor Kevin James Loibel, whose intended massacre was thwarted when one of the many guns he was using misfired, allowing the singer's brother to tackle him, after which, and here's the important part, another G4S operative or sniper terminated the mission by firing a single shot into Loibel's head. We need right, a fact checker. They we, said he shot himself. Exactly. So where's this this unknown <laughs> shooter? I have no. Where was he clue. in the grassy? He, he, he was a sniper. It's a sniper. You could the be a Ameri- hundred mil sniper. You could be far. Uh, how far away can these snipers be? Almost a mile. But Almost it's a, a little mile. concert venue. The media is telling us that. Loibel was killed in an act of heroism, heroism by Christina's brother. And it, it, well, he killed himself. He I, didn't. I thought he attacked Kevin. Didn't he jump and attack? Well, he jumped on him, but they said the guy that shot himself after he okay. was jumped on. Now, I would like to hear what eyewitnesses have to say. Did they see mm-hmm. Kevin grab the gun and point it at his head and blow himself up? Or did they just randomly see a head explode? Well, it doesn't matter anymore because what's on the headlines? You're you're not going to even ever find that. But according to what I'm reading, <laughs> uh, this mission was terminated by uh, a sniper. Yeah, but now, it's, at this point, you're not going to find any information on it because because it's it's definitely out. Um, mediated by the mass shooting mm-hmm. in, at Pulse Club. There. So we don't know now if there was a sniper. We don't know. So what does that mean? If there was a sniper, that they were involved in something much more. Well, it could be. It could be that there there was a plot to have two to have yeah. to plan out two different operatives, right. and then ha- abort one of them mm-hmm. and figure exactly. out which one would be, be- yes. better. Thank you. Better um, played out in the media or yeah. with the with the mass public. That's what I was thinking. Hey, should we attack the concert venue or the gay club? And there was some miscommunication saying, no, 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 don't let's do the gay club thing because this will bring bring about a better story, whatever for Hillary Clinton. I don't know. This is a deep conspiracy. And uh, so let's abort this mission, and then it just didn't go through. And now this guy was insane. He was crazy. He was anti-Christian. He hated her. But they need someone like that. They need to hire right. someone. They, that's like that. why they I'm need, saying they they need to unleash enlist. these people, these crazy people, mm-hmm. to care that they out hire something. for the yeah. company. <laughs> yeah, that they ran, they probably ran a background check and find out he is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but we need no, someone like, crazy. Hire him. Yeah, he's perfect. So, he fits yeah, the, the, perfect the qualifications. The Got the job. And but they have this backup sniper dude in case something terribly goes wrong. And then they tell him like, okay, all right, all right. okay. The story seems like uh, I don't know. It's it's possible. Okay. So okay. And so let me continue. It's, yeah. So as per normal protocol, and once a suspected rogue false flag operation has been detected by the SVR, the Federal Security Service was immediately notified and through their communication channels with the American FBI issued an alert or urgent notification requesting assistance or guidance, but to which the Obama regime never replied to. So, so Obama is behind. It. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Trump is, uh, has a point. Then. Yeah, and, and, and technically, yes. So maybe Trump knows about all this stuff. So all that general talk about no, nah, but I think Trump would probably put it out there, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he talk about know. it? I don't know. Is, is somebody is he a puppet for somebody? Because 
Trump is supposed to tell you like it is. He would say, hey, he's well, behind it. That's what they want us to believe. Obama's behind it. But maybe that's there's more that he's not telling us. Or maybe Trump has no idea. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe he's just, Maybe he doesn't have good facts. By the way, happy birthday, Trump. You're 70 years old. It's your birthday today. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> he's 70? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> today. Hey, yeah, today's, today's his birthday. Yeah. You should wish oh, that was not, nobody that was not that was downplayed in the media today <laughs> all right so and just a little more than 24 hours later mateen's g4s cell or department carried out in full their planned terror operation by attacking a nightclub of gay pride month celebrants but was partly thwarted by two Orlando police officers who were scheduled to be off duty and came suddenly upon scene, causing the other G4S operatives who had been holding the doors shut to flee, while others were captured on video carrying victims back to the shooting scene. Okay, that's a lot to others. Unpack. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack in that one paragraph. So <sighs> we're saying people were, the G4 operatives were closing oh, holding cl the door closed. holding the doors shut and wouldn't there be some cell phone video okay yes oh there is i, I oh, have audio smoking gun i have audio of an eyewitness who was saying that someone was holding doors closed at pulse nightclub and then they got cut off now this is a video from someone's youtube account so again take this with a grain of salt and and like try to escape um and the area was very very narrow um it was very hard to get through but we kept on pushing and trying to get you know as many people as we could to safety however the gunshot started a lot of people were trampled and there was there was there was a guy there that was trying to prevent the door like hold the door closed so that we didn't exit it and he was Janelle? okay so he was cut off what he was cut off just like that. Okay. What was, how was he cut off? Was that just... The coincidence. Uh, a coincidence. That's what it was. I don't know. Okay, or did, now, we, did, we, or did they you? just cut the, the, his clip of what he was saying? That maybe they just edited that out? Perhaps. Like, that's, that's a good point. Maybe it was just the... <laughs> they want us to think he was cut off? Yeah. yeah. But, but okay, but there the wasn't, point, but, I mean, but the point is whether he was cut off or not is irrelevant because what this guy is saying is that someone was sh holding the door shut. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and then now, people are carried back. You said something about that too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. When you watch the video, you see on television, you see, um, people carrying injured or wounded, uh, patrons from the club towards, the the nightclub what's wrong with that <laughs> does anyone see anything they're, wrong well with they're that? trying to make sure they get killed i guess is what you're yeah it, it's odd right why go you look at the clips on nbc abc pbs they show footage of of, of people carrying wounded but had the gunman already been uh, <laughs> you would think that or? you'd be carrying them out of the club or in the direction to, uh, away from the club. Maybe there is a special medical um, setup uh, inside the club. So uh, if there were more than one pe uh, person involved, then maybe they were shot and killed outside the club. I don't know. But, okay, now, to be fair and objective, uh, George Stafanopoulopoulos, what's his name? From, uh, I think it was ABC. From S Sesame Street. From Sesame Snuff 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 Snuffleupagus. <laughs> 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 Yeah, he he was interviewing some guy at the club, and he was saying that he was panicking and freaking out. He heard gunshots, um, and him and his friends were running away, and he thought that the shooter was coming after them. So he turned and shut the door and held the door. And he said he felt bad because you know, oh shoot, I don't know if those people were trying to escape as well. Now, do you buy that? Does that make any sense? What would you do in a situation when you heard gunshots firing? I get that. You get the fuck out, out of there. there, right? You would just that, run like would, like Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> you keep running. <laughs> That's true. Why would you? Well, you bother. Would, actually, you'd either run or you you'd um, get down, hit hit the deck. But he was near the alleyway. He was near the exit. He just got out. 
why would you even bother turning back and holding the door? Now, now, now why would you want to do that for two reasons? One, risk your life getting shot. Hero man. Two, prevent hero. others from getting out. That's insane. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a bulletproof door. So I think yeah. the media is using that loser. I think he's a crisis actor. He's a fake person. And they just used them so they can explain away this whole doors being shut thing. Deep conspiracy going on. So I think it makes more sense that there are operatives or people involved with GO4S and Mateen. They were trying to prevent um, people from coming out. So, okay. And then, so, okay, so what's the end all game okay. since we're entering the okay. uh, uh, 59th minute here? Yeah. Right? What, what, is, what is the, uh, so what is the media trying to do here? What is the government trying to do with the, killing 50 people off like this? Oh, but there's so many, so much more juicy stuff. Well, okay. Well, All right, no, another, no, 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 no. There's more juicy stuff. So the, the other interesting thing is that there was more. There was more than one shooter, and there's testimony. There's there's an eyewitness. Oh, jeez. Um, I keeps ha- going. Yeah. So let me play this clip. And now here's the f- interesting thing. This was actually from ABC News. Reputable. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So unless this is like staged, I, I don't know how people. I don't believe it unless it's George Snapalopagus. Snapalopagus. Okay. Now it wasn't George Snapalopagus or any other popular news anchor, but nonetheless, here's what this guy has to say. And uh, he started shooting, and people were screaming. And then uh, he stopped, and then he went back out, and then we we're, you know, then yeah, he was doing shooting out there just as well. Then he came back in, and then he heard them on the. Uh, uh, he heard them on the, um, you know, talking probably to the police department or texting, and he asked them, please do not text. And so they stopped, but then somebody started the texting back up again, and he said, didn't I say don't text? Give me all your phones. Who's in here? I, 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 are, you, are you guys black? And a couple of them said, yeah. He said that I don't have an issue with the blacks. Hmm. So it looked like his purpose was to shoot white, presumably. Uh, so he did not bother them, did not try to finish the job of shooting in that stall. And then he got on the phone, I don't know if it was with the news or, or the uh, police department, telling them that to stop, America needs to stop bombing ISIS. So Syria. he was calling people on the phone? Yeah, he called somebody on the phone. And he was telling them stop bombing ISIS? Stop bombing ISIS on the fo- uh, in Syria. So then after he had finished with that, he got mad, he hung up, because you know they were asking him, he got just mad. And then he called somebody else that he knew, and he mentioned that uh, that he was the fourth shooter, and there was three others. And he mentioned, I believe, a female name, and that was playing dead, or you know, because he's saying that she she has a bombing vest, and he has one too. And then he said there were three snipers out there uh, waiting for cops to come, so the snipers would shoot at the cops. So there's uh, a bomber lady. And then there's a couple snipers out in the trees. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's no, this a lone wolf? Ha ha ha, poppycock. Now, but this guy could be a lone wolf himself, the guy that they're interviewing. And he could be coming up with... So do you some, think he, this is a fake interview? I don't know. I don't why know wasn't he cut off? Yeah, why wasn't yeah, that guy But it was off? ABC News. Unless they so maybe would have cut him off before they would have got to that video before it was allowed to go and on the air. That's what makes this thing very interesting and questionable. <laughs> yeah, sure, it's ABC. It was an it's ABC. ABC. ABC News. Hmm. And strange enough, there's only three comments. <laughs> hmm. Maybe they've been deleting the comments. Maybe, maybe they've, they've been comments. sniped. Uh, Maybe those people have been sniped. <laughs> okay. Now, so, so two last thing. Um, this whole... Okay, so to the cesspool of cabal secretive services backing Hillary Clinton in this gravest of crimes, this report says it begins with her husband, President Bill Clinton's close relationship with Philip von Malenkraut, who served as chairman of the Council of the World Economic Forum and where, in 2013, they met to form their alliance. As Philip von Malenkrode 
is one of the family controllers of Britain's Schroeder's Bank, one of the oldest banks in the world, that manages the wealth of the Clinton Foundation. The report concludes, one of the other directors of this bank is South African businessman Ashley Martin Almanza, who is also, ready, the CEO of G4S. Ta-da! So the bottom line is that this act of violence was not performed by a lone wolf, as the media would like us to believe. The FBI enlisted the Orlando shooters in an operation. Is it a coincidence that the FBI allowed the shooter to work nine years for G4S, the world's biggest security company and one of the biggest contractors to the Department of Homeland Security? Is it merely a coincidence that G4S was aware the FBI was investigating the shooter in 2013 and did nothing about it? Well, you know, the FBI, again, they didn't have enough evidence because, uh, (laughs) you know, at that point, he hadn't committed any crimes. And they gave him every right to purchase um, weapons. Well, just, you know, got to protect that Second Amendment. Well, he used the G4S weapons provided well, access well to. but but here the the uh, media is also feeding you that he just purchased it a couple days ago walked into a store and purchased a um some AK ar-47 f- that, yeah. that's basically the common mass shooting gun mm-hmm. as we all know all right that's what was used in sandy hook and so many other but it's not banned because uh it's a good hunting weapon the other problem with this whole event is it gives politicians or people who are adamant about politics an excuse to talk about issues that I don't think are really touching the main problem. So, for example, the right wing conservative Republicans are going to turn this issue into terrorism and terrorists. ISIS and kill down those terrorists, kill them to take it to the doorstep. That's what they'll say. We got to <laughs> go ball carpet bombing. Right. That's what they want. World War three war. We want to, we need funding. The FBI is so stupid. See, we we need money. Look how stupid they are. That's why we need more money and we need to bomb the source. Okay. And then access to your cell phone records. Yeah. We want it. We we want to take away your privacy as an American citizen. We want to know when swaggy P is uh, talking, cheating on his, you know, and we need to, we need to give everyone guns, you know, because this world is crazy and insane and filled with Islam, radicalized Islamists. And we need to protect our country by giving everyone guns, (laughs) AK-47s. Okay. And then the left wing free thinkers (laughs) who support the LGBT community, they want to turn this into... Um, gun control gun control okay uh, everyone's gonna be talking about you know you should think, think why we have guns we should restrict uh, gun use and so on and so forth yeah which goes to the whole world uh conquering conspiracy where you try to disarm the civilians right mm-hmm. yeah and then risk another wounded knee massacre mm-hmm but, but wound, gay w- wounded too. knee. What's his wounded knee? What do you mean? With the the Indians and the cavalry, oh. they they confiscated. They grabbed all their weapons and shot them up. So they just want us to be so Indians. Keep, yeah. keep keep the weak weak. Keep the strong strong. strong. Right. Keep, yeah. But the issue should be about, and the media doesn't talk about it. Why are people so full of anger and hatred? What it's drives people? It's easy to, to be angry. And what is the source of all this hatred and anger and bigotry and hatred? Religion. Religion. Exactly. Religion's the problem. And politics. And you, yeah, you mix, and, in, and, you and, mix and, it in with politics. Poverty. Poverty. These people are poor and they have nothing to... Uh, Which is the result of politics and religion. Mm-hmm. You know, these people are, are on their, they have nothing to live for, you know? And you, you can't blame Omar because he's just reading well, shit. You, you can, but not 
the full extent, right? If there's more people behind this. He's just one of the yeah, players. He's the puppet. He's the it's puppet. The pawn. Well, he now, was now, the one me, that carried it out. Let right? me finish so, my thought before people think I'm a fucking <laughs> asshole. Yeah, because well, that's uh, what I'm starting to but, think. No, just he's getting where where's this hatred coming from from the goddamn holy scripture not just in the quran but in 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 the bible leviticus it's in there it says we should put any man who sleeps with another man they should be put to death now some religious nut is going to interpret that literally yeah that's what they do they twist all this stuff into go kill a bunch of gay people yeah (laughs) So well, and then the, the other uh, says so in the Bible. Yeah, the Bible the other, says to kill gays. And oh, the other story is that Mart- Mat- Mateen is suffering from uh, an identity crisis with respect to his se- sexual orientation. Because yeah, he, he was, probably was. That, that that could be true too. Psychologically, he's trying to repress, uh, kill off his his gay mm-hmm. tendencies by killing other gays. Right? He's conflicted. What better way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's conflicted. He he loves God. And he's fearful that he's going to be suffering eternal damnation. So he figures, you know what the hell? Let me kill them all. Um, we're all going to suffer together. And, and what's the redneck thinking? The redneck is thinking, yeah, they're, those M- Muslims are a bunch of nuts, right? So, but, uh, so, <laughs> so we like... should go with the Christian way, right? The qu- Christian way is not crazy, and and the Islamic way is th- those are the crazies. But right? it's in, but the Christians worship the Bible too, the Old Testament. It's yeah, in but there this too. Is just, just justifying their mentality, and, and, and this is just the perfect, you know. And, event and they're also to thinking, one at a time, everybody. one at a time. <laughs> Paul. This it's is, the perfect event to incite everybody, get everybody to support whoever they want. Mm-hmm. You can spin it however you want. And, and Christians are probably just like you're getting into Albert, not really uh, Alado, not not into uh, the LGBT community, and, they, and it kind of serves them, you know. Yeah, this, and, is, their, this is their punishment. Like yeah, and, already- and there was this Texas governor dude douchebag who said that uh, you reap what you sow. Mm, really basically saying coming yeah you had it coming yeah see yeah and and omar's father said it is god's job to punish homosexuality not my sons so what is the hidden assumption what's the assumption that homosexuality is immorally wrong it's Mm. it's morally wrong it's inherently bad and you should be punished Mm. so it's religion the problems with religion so how do you solve it? You, well, I'm going to be extreme. <laughs> Carpet bomb <laughs> religion. The ideology. You don't go to church to church. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I just... It offend so many people. <laughs> yeah. Hence our very limited audience. <laughs> you might want to yeah. stay at home tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay home indoors. Lock Especially my door. Undisclosed I'm gonna d- d- delete that. <laughs> this isn't about gun control. This isn't about is uh, ISIS or Middle East. This is about a fundamental hatred rooted in religious scripture. We fear the other. It's learned behavior. So we just have to unlearn it. The reason why I'm afraid of cockroaches is because my mom and dad uh, created an environment so that I should be afraid of cockroaches. Well, right? there's a bug. There's a bug. Step on diseases. it. Diseases, huh? Then they carry diseases. Are you trying to carry an analogy? <laughs> <laughs> Bugs and my point All is right. that I think a lot of this has to do with the environment, and re- you raise people and, and with religion. You read those bio, the, 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 those scripture. There's a lot of violence, jealousy, hate, and anger, rage. Yeah, it's it's uh, not easy to read. No, it's definitely not rated R. Some of this NC seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> definitely wouldn't want a child reading that book. Yeah, and when someone crazy who's suffering from illusions or delusions uh, or identity crisis. identity crises is going to take the bible or the holy scripture literally and 
figure out a way to solve the problem yeah. in a violent manner. But I, I think just our society is not getting at the crux. The well, the root. you know, you know, that's the weakness of the human beings, they, or the mind. <clears throat> it, it's the herd mentality. Yeah. Every, this uh, is the probably the purpose thing. of the. This is the purpose of the simulation. <laughs> right. There's to I test forgot it about, out. You know, maybe it's a plan to help uh, break free of our, our 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 chains of ignorance. Like. The, the aliens behind the simulation probably just put up another tally marker on the check <laughs> on the board saying, ah, another attack. Oh, great. Fail. Restart. Yeah. Restart. Restart. <laughs> Reboot. Yeah. Let's try again. Hmm. Now, here's... So, Kevin Loibel was a fanatic. He f was following Christina Grimmie's blog posts about Christianity and God and this... I think might have drove drove him to the edge. She says, sometimes God allows terrible things to happen in your life and you don't know why, but that doesn't mean you should stop trusting him. That would, that pisses me off reading that, hmm. but I'm not going to go shoot her up. But if someone <laughs> says that, you know, if something tragic were to happen in my life and someone says, you know, it was in God's plan. Or God, God loves it's supposed you. to be words of encouragement. <laughs> well, I, I take that when as... something tra uh, traumatic happens in your life, that's what will drive you crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. So. so maybe this guy, his mom died but, of cancer. But, but that that will keep um, Christina sane by thinking that, don't you think? Yeah, if but... She, I'm, if, or, or, or has she just never gone through tragedy in her life? I don't know. Maybe she has, and this is her uh, crutch to lean on. And it worked. Mm -hmm. But for others who are mentally and emotionally unstable. <clears throat> just don't read it. <laughs> just don't go on Facebook. But the thing was, he, he, he must have been a fan, a diehard fan of her music, and he was conflicted by her <laughs> views on religion. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, we probably won't <clears throat> have time to talk about Donald Trump's racism. Mm, yeah. We already know. We, we've already talked about it. <laughs> no, no, but I wanted to just highlight them. So in case someone's listening and they're on the the edge and they're not sure, hey, I kind of want to vote for Trump and I'm not really sure. After I, this, probably. Yeah. I think this is more reason to vote for Trump. Yeah. Clinton's <laughs> involved with some shady security yeah. company. <laughs> Therefore, Trump's the only that. option. Yeah. So maybe this is a conspiracy against or Trump's using this. And Andy's smuggling in OTMs and M's. <laughs> M and M's? And, well, and, be and S's. That. And he, S's. Wants, he wants to build the wall to prevent that. Yeah. No, that's what I mean. That, so this article is talking about oh, how yeah. Clinton is allowing it. Right. Because mm -hmm. yeah. she's, she's involved somehow. The CEO of this company is managing their money, their wealth. So, yeah, better be careful. Don't show this. Don't let Trump listen to this. It'll so, be all over it. Yeah, so like the article says, this is this is disturbing. This guy, Omar, who was a terrorist, was helping smuggling illegal immigrants into the com in, in our country in, fe in uh, parts of Arizona. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I got to... Which you're, you're right next far, door. far away. Yeah, I live like far away from that area. So we're going to end with a quick game, uh, unless you have anything else. Lighten things up. Yeah, we're going to light lighten it up. Oh, jeez. One transition beat. That, that was one transition beat the whole time. Yeah, that's our only transition. <laughs> Into a lighthearted, fun <laughs> kitty game called Guess the Name of That Animal. So I'm going to play some animal sounds. And you need to guess <laughs> that animal. <laughs> we go from. Is it going to be a cat? I don't know. Let's see. Such a we have sharp. To guess, we have to guess the animal. I guess the animal. <laughs> Such a dynamically opposing theme here. All right. Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go. Uh, okay. Uh, attempt. All right. All right. It hurt, hurt my ears. It hurt your ears? Yeah. It's too loud? Not as that, loud as Trump. Is, yeah. 
No, that's a dog of sorts. A, do- a dog what of sorts. What type sort? of dog? What type of dog? What type of dog. Well, you don't need to name the type of dog. Is it an older dog? Definitely a dog. It is a puppy. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you guess correct. What? Is that Trump's dog? That is Trump's dog. So somebody needs to feed that dog. He's a little hungry. Yeah. All right. Now Paul's turn. <laughs> Right. Are these trick? Are, ah, these aren't right. trick ears. <laughs> it's too loud. High <laughs> pitch. Just a like ear hearing test or something. <laughs> um, it's a bird. What? The, uh, uh, I don't. A, a little chick. Yeah, that, you're chick, very good. Chick, very good. Chick it person. is a chick. So we have to guess the age of, of these. It is a chickling too. and the a one month old chick. Yeah, and Stephen technically wasn't a. Dog. It was a puppy, puppy. before. So. Young, Ooh. youngling dog. A youngling dog. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right, and Stephen. It's a tricky one. A, a middle-aged bird. <laughs> middle-aged bird. <laughs> what kind of bird? <laughs> <laughs> midlife crisis <laughs> bird. A, mid, a, a bird suffering from a mis, uh, midlife crisis yeah you want to be a little more specific a, a Mid- jungle bird. a jungle bird <laughs> jungle bird uh, you know the jungle bird from the toucan jungle yeah, a, a toucan no no toucan it is a duckling <laughs> what that <laughs> well ducklings <laughs> Sounds uh, like a chick. I've never, well, you never heard ducklings more like quack. Like ducklings quack. make those weird noises. Those little. <laughs> I, didn't, I did not know that. Yeah. It's new, new news. New news. Uh, all right, Paul's turn. <laughs> That's a kitten. Yes, very good. Kitten. That was a kitten. Or a what? dying baby dinosaur. No, actually, that was Trump strangling his <laughs> b- cat. <laughs> Trump has a cat. Yeah. On his head. Okay, and then finally, last one, Stephen. <laughs> Ow. That was pretty loud. It is a, a baby monkey. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, baby monkey. Yeah. Uh, what is that? A baby goat? Yeah, very good. Very good. Woohoo! Paul wins. <laughs> Paul has a farm. Or something. Paul knows his baby farm animals. <laughs> Actually, sound like a baby, a human. Yeah, baby. it did. So <laughs> I, I a radicalized how, baby, how come he Islamic didn't, baby. How come he didn't modulate them, make them sound like aliens we have to get our country back to work we're not we don't have any jobs uh what a depressing episode with yeah. the, with <laughs> very we have depressing. to lighten it up next time yeah sports we're gonna talk about sports two to one top six bum on the bad pounds. bum still still pitching right yep so they're, they're playing the brewers 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 brew crew well, the Giants have been winning games. The three yeah, out of yeah, they've been winning. Mm-hmm. That's the bright note. Okay. Despite so all the injuries. <clears throat> yeah, they've got quite a few. Pence is out for two months. Pagan, pagan, <clears throat> pagan just came back. <laughs> pagan <laughs> night. Oh, he came back. Okay. Yeah, he's yeah. in now. Uh, then there was well, Ma- Matt Cain came back too, but he Matt Cain turned. It was like a rotating door or a revolving door. Yeah, so he came in and they came out. <laughs> came, came out. <laughs> uh, yeah, Superman is hurt too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, what happened to him? He Kryptonite. Oh, the sprained <laughs> thumb. Sprained thumb. Ah, he's no Superman. Springing your thumb. Nope. He's just Clark Kent. Mm-hmm. Not anymore. Is there anyone else? Or Romo's still out, isn't he? Romo's still out. <clears throat> well, he's out for the season, right? No. Well, he should be coming back. But I don't know when. 
And Casilla's got an injured ego <laughs> that needs mending. <laughs> that is yeah. He goes on the disabled list. Emotionally disabled. Can, can you get on the the EL? <laughs> the emotional list? Emotionally disabled. <laughs> distraught. Uh, yeah, he, was, he was blowing one after another for a while I there. Know. Do you think he has a I bright future? He'll be fine. I think he'll be fine. Just needs to work out this. And if the bullpen overall pitches better, I think he'll be better. He's if always. to get Romo back, he, yeah. he'll probably be more confident. <clears throat> and Samarja went through a little a little rough patch these past couple patch. games. Yeah. Giving up home runs. Getting a little too cocky. That, that, well, that was his, he's prone to that, right? Because he led the league, I guess. Uh, was it last year, a couple of years ago? Last year, yeah. Well, Quaid, that's, that's his thing. If he did, as long as he doesn't give up home runs, he's pitches really well. Mm-hmm. Cueto had a little bit of a back problem. A strain. He did, back. but he actually pitched well that game. Yeah, he pitched was through it. Long and grueling, but he got through it. Mm-hmm. I, that they still lost the game, I think, though, because the bullpen didn't really come through. Think I don't. Well, they lost the do- game against the Dodgers, and that was in part because they called a buck on his little. Oh, that's right. Shimmy. Oh yeah, shimmy. One he, too many shimmy. He, he did a little prolonged shimmy. Yeah, the pro- <laughs> the, the the umps were just not. And I was like, sorry, what? Too, what? He he's like, what? Too what you, traditional. What, what's this moving thing? What are you doing with your the, waist? He had. He, they just had to say something. Is yeah. he dancing up there? It's it's, it's Is too, he sticking his butt in too, front of me. Too provocative. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess he can't do it with men on base. You have to be really careful with that. So probably not going to see him do that again. Yeah, because the the, the runner is going to misinterpret that move as like yeah, an interruption he can't in his flow. The runner and yeah, he might have thought upset. he was he was out at the disco club or something. I don't know. <laughs> Or he sharded his pants, you know. <laughs> oh, I'll just pitch it. So, so, so the shimmy adjust the pant, the shimmy shard, shimmy sharding. Aaron Garcia, my good friend, came to visit me. We we're watching the Sharks Who? game. Aaron Garcia. Uh oh. Call the call the authorities. How do you spell that? Uh, Aaron spell Garcia. <laughs> Okay. He came. <laughs> you're writing it down. Uh, he came to visit me. We watched the one of the games, the third game. I'm not sure which one. The Sharks playing against the Penguins. He brought me a, a San Jose Sharks T-shirt that oh, he really? thought that he thought would fit me. <laughs> and when I put it on, it was like just too big. It was, just, uh, it was too like, big. It was huge. I was, I was basically pajamas all the way down to my feet. <laughs> D- double X. Double X. And I'm like, dude, you must have been really big for a skinny guy back in the day. And so I took it off. And then right when I took it off, uh, the Penguins scored two uh, shots. So uh, in his head, the whole time, he's like, see what you did. You took off the shirt and they lost the game. Oh. So I agreed to watch the next game when he took off and they won. Sure. So I texted him and said, see, you need to watch the next two games, the rest of the games. And then it didn't still didn't, but hold then up. they didn't win. <laughs> Just didn't work. It didn't work, but he's definitely yeah. suspicious. Of superstitious. Of super, or yeah. Superstitious. And like, uh, I thought that was just for baseball, but I guess the sports, yeah, in hockey, it's pretty bad. Like when you win the conference championship, at least the Western Conference, mm-hmm. that trophy that they give you, none of the players will touch it. Why? They want, they're they afraid if they touch it that they won't win the Stanley Cup, oh. the championship. Wow. So they all pose next to it, but they're very stiff because they don't want to touch that uh-huh. conference championship trophy. <laughs> So there's a lot of superstition. I guess the la- the last team that did touch it didn't win. I guess maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then they have that uh, supposedly justified superstition. Well, they should have touched it. They probably would have won. To reverse yeah, it. I know. Yeah. Now, now it doesn't matter anyway. Like yeah. They could have celebrated that a little more. Mm. Too bad for the Sharks. Yeah. It took them 25 years to get to the Stanley Cup Finals and. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> that long time. Yeah. The Penguins seemed very aggressive. Well, 
the especially the last game, they were just kept going. And they're, and they're fast. They are fast. Way yeah. faster than the slow sharks. Slow sharks. They I mean, probably, the sharks were fast for all their Western Conference opponents, but right. compared with the Penguins, they were slow. Yeah. But I have to say, with the goalie, what was his name? Young? Or Martin Jones? Jones. Martin Jones. Mm-hmm. So... He's uh, going to be really good. Yeah, he he made some amazing blocks. Yeah, it, no. they weren't, saves. The Sharks weren't helping saves. them. Saves. saves. <laughs> What's the difference between saves and blocks? Basketball has blocks. All right. Probably all right, block right. shots. Yeah, he blocked yes. it. Technically, it's okay. a, so it's a save by blocking. But yeah, he he was uh, yeah. Yeah, a really good goalie. I thought. Yeah, compared be, to the penguins that was his first year with the sharks mm-hmm. so they'll have him for a, a long time <laughs> i remember that one uh part of the game when he they're just going at him and then he fell and he slipped and he was stretched out and he's trying to go back do you remember that one that was, uh-huh. yeah, that was saved great. it with his pad with his pad yeah he made some really nice saves and just wasn't enough because their defense wasn't Mm-hmm. Good enough at all. He had to, he had to face too many shots. Yeah. That was the problem. Probably exhausted. Mm-hmm. Oh, so they had a lot more shots than uh, the Sharks. Oh yeah. Overall. And even yeah. The, during the power play, I thought they would be more aggressive, take advantage of that. Yeah, they didn't really get a whole lot of the Sharks didn't get a whole lot of shots off their power play, and mm-hmm. the Penguins just they just took over. Mm-hmm. I, I freaked but, out because I I'm, I wasn't really familiar with hockey and i guess <laughs> i was like paul i sent a text why is there no goalie on the sharks i oh. thought this was supposed to be a great extraordinary upcoming uh goalie <laughs> what did he, what, he just fall asleep True. yeah and so now you know why yeah so why is explain to our listeners why yeah well, it's, if you're behind a goal or two at the final couple of minutes you have to pull your goalie so you can get an extra skater extra mm-hmm. regular player to try to get a goal so you can get six players instead of five <clears throat> but yeah if they if the other team gets the puck it's easy they can just shoot it in and that, That's caught, the risk. You know, that pretty much ends the game once yeah. once they score it's the risk the chance you have to take so uh, you know, it's a bold move but it was a and you know, what are you gonna what are you gonna do take no, your chances but it's it's common in kind of any hockey game yeah. they do that towards the end if they're only down a goal. In the playoffs, especially. Yeah. Not not too much in the regular season unless they can, I don't know, unless, like, you're not going to do it if it's a meaningless game. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> this is ASP Stuff Radio, season two, episode number 25, with all this terrorist talk in my brain. We are all stuffed up. Love in response to hate. Love does not despair. Love makes us strong. Love gives us the courage to act. Love gives us hope that change is possible. Love allows us to change the script. So love your country. Love your family. Love the families and the victims and the people of Orlando. But let's remember that love is a verb. And to love means to do something. (laughs) 